Welcome to the Minecraft DevSync for October 16th. Yes, October 16th, 2020. Welcome. All uh, right, so we're wrapping up our sprint here. We've only got a couple more sprints before our, our big uh, get together, um, which I guess the community doesn't know much about. Maybe we can close them in on that a little later. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we should be wrapping up uh, at least uh, the major work on uh, the Wakeward Tiger, and uh, we're this is our last week to get other stuff done before the boards come in this weekend, and uh, we start going heads down on uh, yeah, bringing those up and, and getting those ready. So, uh, so where are we, Chris Bear? Let's start with you. All right, I have show and tell. <coughs> awesome. All we still see is you. Oh, wait, here it is. Okay. Biggest waste of time oh. when you get older. Um, <laughs> when you go to precise uh, Mycroft, in my case, it's not test, but in production case we got AI slash tag slash whatever the wake word is. Um, you get the screen, which is now you have seen before, but is now populated with my APIs. <laughs> um, That's a lot of audio for one sample. Well, this isn't a wake word sample. I have a very low tolerance level for stupid bullshit. <laughs> that's <Okay>. my. <laughs> say, that's a that's a lot. That's just of, a wave file that I I I've downloaded for fun to test this with. Okay. Um, so all of this works coming from the database. Um, I am not quite. When you click one of these buttons, you see I get an error. Um, so I'm still working through why that is. Uh, but that should be pretty easy. I also need to um, implement the navigation. And then wanted to talk to Derek about that, how he wanted to get to the tagger. Um, I figured it okay. would be uh, contribute here with awake words, something or other. So, so at risk of feature creep, which we don't want to do because I've been packing software and we have much to do. Um, could we have a page that shows all of the wake words that are in process and then on the left hand side of the page show wake words that need work, maybe a color code like red, yellow, green? And, oh, okay. And then on the right hand side, the ones that are complete. And then as an added bonus, um, we could add a dialect drop down so the person can select their dialect. So mine would be American English, right? Or Midwestern English or Midwestern white dude, or I'm, I'm not sure what that, what that, what that thing says, but then it would display the page based on completeness for my dialect. So I select male, Midwestern English, and it shows all the ones that are green that have plenty of samples from white dudes from Kansas. And then on the left, it shows the wake words that don't have any samples or have fewer samples from the white guy from Kansas. That can be an iteration too. <laughs> yes, that is not that is not something for right now. But my yeah, my my charge was to get the most basic of the tagger working in this sprint, and it's it will be by the end of today. It is very close. Because um, that would be that would be pretty slick from the standpoint of you know if somebody speaks with a Hindi dialect. And they go to the page, it shows all red, and they click on each one and they do a sample for like 10 different wake words and it greens them up and they get tagged and trained. And every time we uh, every time somebody shows up from Sumatra or wherever, we're able to expand our our data set. I'll shut up now and let you do your demo. Sorry. So uh, we're we're an individual with a low pitched voice if we want to be politically correct. But just keep in mind that Google actually keeps theirs as male and female voices. So I guess they're not quite woke yet. Okay, so in order for this to be finished, what I need to be able to do is to navigate to it. 
which I assume would be a wake word entry on this contribute menu. Right, that's what I had mocked up. I think we just put in the two places I had we could navigate to it in the Figma mockup was um, in that drop down menu under contribute at the bottom at a tag wake words um, option. And um, unless anyone has a better, that was what I thought we could, could call it, but if someone has a better uh, title for it. I was just gonna um, put wake word down there because eventually we're gonna have more than just a tagger. We'll have a contribute wake word contribution tool as well. So that's true. initially it'll just take you here, but eventually it'll give you an option to tag or to contribute samples. And then the other place we talked about it, and I've got a mock-up for it too, is a card that we could put on your home page. So when you first log in, you know, we've got a couple of cards there, like, you know, if you're a contributor, one that says thank you. Um, but, you know, that could be, we could wait on that. You know, if you just want to yeah, satisfy I, what we I originally think, talked about, we could just put it in there for now. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's a fine place for it for now. I, I think we need to rethink this, the whole top level, you know, navigation for this. I, ideally, this would be a lot uh, more exposed and easy to find than having to go to a sub page of a sub page. Uh, but, um, uh, but for now, just in terms of like getting, getting it functional, um, that, that seems like a fine place for it. Okay, so I'll add a wake word to this navigation. When you click on that, you'll come to this screen. My next question is what wake words do we want to expose or tagging right now? The four I have here are there because they're the four that we have as um, options when people add devices. Um, so that's why I picked them. You know, no other reason. Does that sound like a good starting point? Do we just want to focus on hey Mycroft and Christopher? Are Any all these precise there? models that are trained currently? No, only hey Mycroft has a model. Christopher might. I don't remember where we left Christopher at. We were starting to train Christopher um, a while back. But hey Jarvis and Ezra right now are just pocket sphinx words. Okay. Well, let's not lose sight of where we're at and what we're trying to accomplish. <coughs> we have plenty of male voices saying, hey, Mycroft, our deficiency is and will be for every wake word, other voices saying the wake word. Or, yeah, we don't care about not the wake word. We can get those plenty. But, you know, female voices, children's voices, accented voices saying, hey, Mycroft, is really our deficiency. And I'm not sure how we're going to present that and try to nudge people in that direction. But if we don't do that, we may just end up right back where we are, which is a ton of male voices saying, hey, micro. And that's really not gonna solve our problem. Well, so again, that's the next iteration is to, we, I, right now my algorithm is give me a random something. Again, we're trying to get this functional first. And then we'll no, 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 it's nothing to do with what we're doing. It's, yeah, it's more about how do we <coughs> encourage non-male speakers to say, hey, Mycroft, and capture that. No, that's outside my scope. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. But that, I'm, that's I'm, something I think I'm wondering, like, in terms of the, question, the direct question in front of us, like, I'm wondering if we just skip this page for the moment and link straight to the hey, Mycroft tagger. Yeah, like, I, I would agree. With only, that. only do hey Mycroft for the moment. But anyway, my, my point was more for Derek. So yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think it's important for us to get the the pathway uh, settled. You know, as you've described, Ken, like we've got uh, we've got certain kinds of we, we need certain kinds of data to be tagged, and uh, so let's focus on that. Uh, and then we can expand it to the you know, new wake words, and especially since these are not, well, it looks like maybe there's a Christopher model out there. I don't know how much it's being used, but um, it's certainly not our focus. Right now, I think our focus should be on getting the Hayden Mycroft uh, wake word to work really well. Okay, well then <coughs> I will launch straight into um, this, this stuff. Yeah, no, I'll be Hayden Mycroft. Um, okay, so so yeah, so I'll go straight from the wake word navigation into here. 
Um, so the next question is, if I click one of these buttons, and this is a question for Derek, um, what, do we need any kind of feedback that they completed the task other than we're switching to the next item to tag? Or um, do we want like a snack bar or something to come up that says, you know, hey, you did this, move on to the next one. I, I didn't know what you wanted to do to acknowledge that they were had finished on the screen. That's a good thought. Um, I don't think we need much. I think it just needs some indication that we've moved on to the next screen. Um, I could change skip to done. Well, after somebody clicks something. It'd be nice to just be able to click it and have it to be able to do it, you know, fairly quickly. Just click it and so you'll so like we'll just move to the next tag. Yeah, you just click it, move to the next next page. Okay. Um, I think course, we just need some kind of transition to sh like so that there's a an indication that something's changed. Like if it if it was too quick, then you know they might not realize that the, the tag the audio file has changed and then just hit the same button again kind of thing. Yeah, I mean we could you could set up like. You could just keep like a count of how many they've done, right? So they could see the number change, or you could put like a progress bar. I don't know if that's what you meant by snack bar. I don't know what that is, but uh, but just you know, give people a goal of like, hey, tag eight, tag eight words for us, you know, and they'll just the bar just fills up when we get to eight, you know. It could just say, hey, do you want to do another eight, you know, something like that. Um, well, yeah, we talked about we talked about a, a progress bar on the top. But we kind of push that to a to a mixed res um, yeah. with like points and you know a, a running count of your points up top. Of that. Right. Um, so maybe for now, yeah, we just I don't know. Um, Would it be fairly simple to change the button, you know, to a to a tick icon, like when you click it, and add a delay so that you can't re-click it for, you know half a second or a second or something like that. Or they should yeah, be grayed out yeah. until you play the sample. That's a good oh, idea. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. That's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah. So, so not to belabor the point, but again, at this point, Derek, um, the fact that we could say this is a single or multiple sample, a case of multiple times the wake word being spoken, probably such a low occurrence we could almost algorithmically figure that out from the length of the wave file but here is where i really think we need to capture or somehow figure out how to capture whether this is a non-male wake word sample because those become of higher value to us moving downstream from here and it's not clear to me how we're going to ultimately do that it so seems like to make that clear for me, another iteration when that's kind of really the most important thing to capture at this point in time. Okay, well, so we just, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Um, first of all, this is you know every tag we want to do in the first iteration is just a database entry. So if we want to add female, if we want to add if we want to add gender, if we want to add age, I just got to put those in the database, and then we'll randomly get selected. Um, so we can, this is not the only screen. This is just the screen that I have. This is the row I have in my personal database right now. The only thing this is. Yeah, no, I mean, the, I just, the buttons I just come from the database? database? That's the valuable. Hmm. Does what come from the database, Chris? The, the button name, like the, the text for the buttons, is that coming from the database? Is that what you're saying? Yep. So like if, if yep. you add. This, this is a database column. This is a database column. This is a database column, and the values of these are database columns. Or, so, well, yes. how did you know they were multiple versus single? What do you mean? They're different values in the database. They're, they're, oh, I see. You're saying they're, they're columns you're going to fill in based upon the action taken on this screen. Yeah, these are all values for the, do you hear the, the wake word tag? Right. Yeah, the, so for the, the gender one, there's, you know, different values. There's three values yeah. for the gender one, uh, masculine, yeah. neutral, and feminine. Yeah, the way that the database strong. is set up is that 
each tag can have its own values. I mean, I would suggest for you guys on the back end, like if we need, you know, say, hey, we need a bunch of gender tags, like we have a way to like prioritize that. And I mean, as opposed to putting it in the hands of the user, you know. So yeah, that's pass number two. That's, that's, yeah, we're okay. talking about having that algorithm so that, you know, somebody like Ken can go in and say, hey, these are my priorities. These are the tags I really care about. And, uh, and even set up targets like, you know, like I need to have uh, this ratio of tags in order to train a model. And the system should be always trying to get things tagged in that ratio. Yeah, but I think we're confusing two concepts here. The one is what you're talking about, Michael, is the ability to say, this is what I need to train. What I'm talking about is the ability to classify the big set of data we have right now <laughs> that's not classified. And while it's certainly important to know whether it's the wake word or not the wake word, we know what's going to happen, right? We know that 90% of those samples are going to be male voices saying, hey, micro. And what we really want is the 10%. And I'm trying to figure out how we can get that or at least start working towards that in this iteration. Okay, well, I think Chris can show us a demo of that next week because, like you said, it's pretty easy. It's just another row in this things to be tagged table. Yeah, so what I want to do, and that's probably a good discussion. I don't know if we want to do it later, but what's the next thing we do to this? So I want to roll this out as, as simple as it is right now, the ability to tag whatever tags we define on any wake word we have. Um, then once that's deployed, that, that'll be deployed with all the other stuff I've done to Cellini recently to support um, all this wake word tagging and all the wake word collection stuff. Um, so once all that's deployed, that'll be the first thing I do next week. Then, my, then the next question is, what is the next iteration of this tool? Um, if, it, if it's, you know, improving the algorithm so that we get certain kinds of data that like Ken alluded to, or if it's, you know, or some, whatever, what was Josh was saying, or what was the, or the <coughs> progress bar or whatever, um, just need to know what we want, what's most important for the next iteration of this. We can, you can talk about that when we plan the sprint next week, but just yeah. to put it in your head. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, was there any other news this week? Uh, no, I've been pretty much concentrating on this thing, so. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, all right. Uh, Ken, you're up next. Yeah, so I, uh, let's see, this week I've been working mainly on uh, the VK tests. I've got the um, wake word upload VK tests uh, running. Of course, they're not working because of the authentication URL issues, but they're ready to go. Uh, I've been looking into the code Chris pointed me to for the actual <coughs> Selini VK tests, and I'll be starting on those soon. I did a couple of minor pull request code reviews, and I'm working on a ticket Chris gave me, which is a... Um, Redirect, redirect for the existing Flask app. So I guess the point is we want to just basically send them back a 200, but not actually capture any of that data. Is that the intent behind that, Chris? So I think what we, we, we've disabled the code in core, but as we've, as we've seen, not everybody has the most recent version of core, and we're still yeah. getting those samples. So what I would like to be able to do is is if somebody still uses that old URL um, that is in the code right now, we redirect it to the new URL in the proxy, and a new URL is what we put in core going forward. Oh, I didn't appreciate that. So what you're saying is that if somebody hits the existing URL, you still want it to hit your new entry point? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out how that's going to work with authentication since the initial URL isn't picking up the authentication token. Well, or, we, yeah, or, or we could just ignore anything using the old URL. Just and, send a send a, res, send a response redirect and just redirect it to the page. It just send it as HTML. 
No, 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 you're missing the point. So the current code doesn't authenticate. The current URL doesn't expect authentication. The new URL expects authentication. So the current code hitting the old URL and redirecting to a new URL will immediately fail because of a lack of an authentication token. Yeah, why wouldn't it? Why, why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it ask the user to log in at that point? Once they log in with their creds, no, they go back. Coming from the device, not from Selenium. Which in is in other words, before there's there's code that says, "Did I just think the wake word was triggered?" Yes. Well, let me send that sample up to the host without authentication. Yeah. So I think actually talking about a small number of devices too, and it's going to get. Time, so like, we're, you know, we're looking yeah. at maybe 30 files a day is what we're getting uploaded. Yeah, so to answer yeah. the question, it's probably just, just change the proxy to return a few hundred or something like that. Well, yeah, I'll just return. Just just yeah, so just go ahead and return a 200 like everything is copacetic. Just don't do anything with it. Yeah, yeah, and that, that can be done at the proxy level. So I can do that pretty easily, I think. So not to be contentious, but then why bother doing that? Why not just capture the sample and save it anyway. And then later we can, they can go into, they're going to go into a separate place anyway. They're going into some holding pattern and later we can just write some code to pull them out and send them over to the regular and get them into the database. Um, I mean, in other words, it's not that big a deal. What we're saying is we'll throw away 30 wake words a day. So uh, we can do that. That's fine. That's fine. I was just saying that, you know, we could also capture them and process them later, but yeah, it's just such a small amount. I'll just return a 200. They won't, the code won't know any different. It'll think it uploaded its wake word. It just won't. And, and that's that. That'll be fine. Okay. All right. So that's what I'll do. All right. Um, and um, so are you, you prepared to uh, start working on these boards on Monday? This is mean. Uh, Kevin I'm prepared to start working on them on Saturday or Sunday too. Okay. Uh, the other thing, uh, Derek, did you uh, mail me or send me the um, effective <laughs> unit or two? Actually, two would be better just to make sure that it's the same problem with both of them. Yeah, it's on its way. It probably won't get there until early next week. That's fine because I won't be there until early next week. I'm down at the condo. <laughs> okay. Okay, <cool. laughs> All right, that's it for me, Michael. Awesome, thanks. All right, Derek. You're next. All right. Uh, let's see. So <clears throat> I've mostly just been continuing to work with that V2 of the FDM design, um, which I'm just kind of just wrapped up before our meeting. Uh, I did actually talk to Kevin a little bit this afternoon. Um, he's still planning on getting boards tomorrow. Um, he, uh, I asked him if he could modify to start with anyway modify his laser cut enclosure for his first um, tests and he said he could actually make uh, some more he's got access to the maker space over there so he might make a few more of the laser cut ones because they're much quicker to do um but yeah as soon as we can get uh this fdm thing going i'll have um josh and myself and Kevin all spitting out iterations of that. Um, let's see. I think the things that I still have in progress are, um, I did get the camera modules yesterday, like I talked about on Wednesday, but I haven't actually got a chance to, to really mess with them yet. Um, and I do have, I just got the LED uh, switch spec stuff to really go over with Ken in detail. So um, <clears throat> I've still got that to do. Um, yeah, we've got all the parts. Uh, there actually, there was a, a split shipment on the speakers. So I'm not going to get part of the speakers until I think Tuesday of next week. Um, we only got eight of the 40 so far. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that'll slow us down. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where I'm at. So I need to do some spec stuff for Ken and play with these cameras. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. 
Um, yeah. So, uh, home assistance for getting a lot of love this week um, or lately, which is really cool to see. Um, and Steve uh, Stratus, that I've been doing those videos with, um, has really <coughs> taken ownership over that and is reviewing those. Um, uh, and there's a lot of work coming from uh, a guy named Tony um, uh, and a few others. Um, but anyway, so there's, there's lots of good stuff happening there. Um, personally, the, I've been working on a lot of CI stuff. Um, there's a few issues that have cropped up. Um, uh, a big one being like, because in the skills, in the micro skills tests, um, they're using a share, they're using a, a volume on the, on the Jenkins host. Um, and so if, if two tests are running at the same time and one finishes and then it cleans up that that volume then it causes the second um, run to fail um, so uh, I kind of thought that that was happening and I mentioned it a little while ago but I, I caught it properly yesterday um, and so yeah just looking at the best way to deal with that um, it looks like in the core tests we we lock that resource so that the two Microsoft core runs can't happen at the same time. So I'm assuming the same thing should work for skills. Um, anyway, that wasn't on the board already, but it seems like a, an important one to, to deal with. Uh, done a few up, done quite a few updates to the timer skill and the alarm skill and the news skill um, to deal with. Uh, mostly to do with test issues. Um, there was uh, another instance of the, you know, a, a problem in one test or the outcome of one test bleeding into future tests, um, which was making it seem like there was a problem in a, a completely different skill. Um, so I've done a temporary workaround for that, which essentially just tells Microsoft to shut up at the end of a particular test. Um, so that it doesn't then continue speaking and pollute the next one. Um, <coughs> the lingua franca stuff is is still coming along. Um, there was like when we were doing uh, when Chance in particular was doing um, deeper testing across um, the whole range of skills, uh, discovered that there was a, a reason at some point in the past. Um, that skills needed to pass lang equals none into some of the functions, which doesn't really make any sense, right? Like if, you, if you're asking a, a language for, um, parser to, to do something, then it's probably going to do some language. Um, but the intention behind it was that that would make it English because English was the default. Anyway, there's, there's some weird things like that where like past decisions are, are caught making it a little bit more difficult. Um, and there's also a little issue with the tests under Python 3.5, um, which seem to just be the tests not working properly rather than it not working under Python 3.5. Um, so we're probably going to just say that those should be skipped on that version of Python um, and call it a day, I think, particularly given 3.5 is deprecated um, as in Globe, like you know, it's it's reached its end of life, and um and we should we should remove it at uh twenty one oh two. Um. Uh, and then some, yeah, trying to trying to push PRs from the community forward. Um, so I think, uh, in particular the the plugin system for STT and and TTS and audio services, uh, and now wake words. Um, I think that all the feedback from Chris Bear has been addressed from what I can see. So I'm going to, I'm going to do one more deep look at that just to make sure that there's, um, there's nothing else and, uh, hopefully merge that in. Yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> all right. Sounds like a busy week. Uh, Josh, do we have an update system yet? Yeah, it's all completely done, ready to go, and just waiting for the software. Uh, so yeah, the the 
Bellina stuff, I spent some pretty significant time with it, um, including attempting to push the Mycroft Docker image across to, to the Raspberry Pi through Bellina. Um, it does look like that's a workable solution for us. Uh, you know, I, so far I haven't played with their cloud service, which is what they charge for. I've just been playing with open Bellina and the Bellina platform itself. And that works fairly well. Um, it allows you to containerize the stuff. It allows you to do updates um, as a, a atomic, both to the operating system and to the, to the application. Um, you know, it, it, it does everything we want it to do. Plus, they have a Bellina Wi-Fi setup uh, tool that does all of the Wi-Fi setup stuff, including, and I was really happy to see this, um, including a, 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 the ability to punch through a captive portal. So you could set it up in a hotel or whatever, which has always been, a, been something that Minecraft couldn't do. Uh, we may have to do some maintenance inside of their Wi-Fi setup stuff. Um, to make it look and act the way that we want it to, but that's a that's definitely something that we can have happen. Um, I, I did find as I was unpacking our Docker images and pushing them across that our imaging process is um, really, I'll just do the truffle shuffle, like it's really fat and chubby. And so the, the, the uh, you know, it, it seems to pull everything and the kitchen sink and toss it into the into the application. Uh, and so we do need to narrow our stuff down so that we're not just randomly grabbing huge packages and shoving them onto the device because we needed one function or because yeah, actually in some cases people just simply didn't remove the dependency when we stopped being dependent on it. Um, so I think that that's a workable solution. I think we should also evaluate PandaCore. Um, the, the things that that um, and there's a, there's several other open solutions out there. They, they're all basically the same, though. At the end of the day, most of them are Docker uh, are are Docker dependent, and they basically allow you to move your Docker container onto devices in in a seamless way. Um, the one thing I will say about the Bolina stuff is that um, two things become possible for our customers, which I really kind of like. So one is if we work with them on the cloud service, we should be able to export. Uh, large numbers of devices into groups and then pass those groups off to a new manager. And so if we're working with, uh, let's say a hotel chain and they want to buy, they want to manage, you know, 10,000 devices, um, we can set those up, sell them to them, you know, get, get them all configured the way they need to be and then pass them off to the hotel chain to manage those devices within Bellina. Um, I suspect that there's a business arrangement for there for, for us to have with Bellina, uh, in other words, we get a kind of a, a payment for making that happen. And then the, the chain would pay them for, for the update processes and, and whatnot. Um, the other thing that, that stood out to me is that they, you know, it looks like the Bellina uh, company has a really strong interest in deploying uh, Bellina, for lack of a better word, appliances um, to the broader community. And so you know, if we engage with them, I suspect that they would make a, a Mycroft uh, Bolina image available uh, across all of their platforms. And, you know, they support it's some ridiculous number of boards. It's like 150 boards. And so if we worked with them on that, you know, anybody who used that platform could really easily grab my, grab a Mycroft instance and just shove it onto the device and it would just go without us having to do a bunch of heavy lifting. And that would move us on to BeagleBone Black and Intel Nook and all these other platforms that, that people are using. So so anyway, good progress on that. I actually am probably gonna peel away a, a, a day this weekend as well to spend some more time on that. And uh, I would like to get something working for Mycroft in the near term. Um, that being said, the install log for moving our Docker image over there is 2,300 lines long and so there's a lot going on in there and making it actually work is, as I sent Michael a note midweek is non-trivial. It's not, it's not as easy as it could be. All right, thanks. Uh, Chris, you had a question. Yes, um, so does this mean that we need to be running Docker on our machines and we'll be running over Doc off of Docker images instead of like a, you know, up on the bare OS? Yeah, so the bare OS is provided by Bellina or 
uh, they're all this, all these things are the same. They're provided by whatever the application provider is. It provides an operating system that has drivers and all of the magic that allows you to interact with the hardware. The application is deployed in a container on top of it. It looks like pretty much everybody's standard on standardized on Docker. So that's kind of where, where it lives. Um, you know, the, the issue that, and, and so, yeah, we would be running inside a Docker container. We could get persistence by mapping, you know, local, local storage into our Docker container and persisting with settings and things like that. Um, but it does get a little trickier when you add a third layer of abstraction, you know, first you've got the operating system, then you've got the image application or the application image. And then you have the skills abstraction on top of that. Um, like figuring out how all of that is going to be organized is something that, that we are going to have a discussion, have to have a discussion about, um, Partially because, you know, it's good for everybody to have input partially because as I'm reaching into this, I'm realizing how far out of control Mycroft has gotten in terms of the size of the project and the size of the community and the size of the software. And it is no longer understandable in a reasonable period of time coming at it from scratch. Like it takes some dedication to get into it and you guys are deep into it. So you're, you're going to need to weigh in on that. Yeah. So the reason I asked and you brought up when we talk, um, as a group is, you know, that's Docker, running Docker on the machine, that's one more thing that's running on our machine. Um, so I don't know, you know, Pi's, Pi 2's probably have enough power to do all that, but, you know, we talk about you know, how much CPU you're going to use. I just want to make sure that we, you know, we, we're aware of, you know, what the CPU utilization is going to be when we start, you know, running a Docker server, or not Docker server, but um, running Docker on the machine and the Docker host and all that good stuff. Well, I mean, uh, I see two things coming from running an image, you know, running a Docker container. Um, number one, it'll it'll force us or encourage us to get skinny, right, and really limit the amount of stuff that we're pushing down in that image, and really look at our services carefully and say, okay, where do we where do we trim the fat, right? Um, I think that that's a an important piece, and then I, I don't know that processor time is necessarily the enemy. Heat is the enemy. I mean, that's that's what I'm concerned about. I, I'm not concerned that we don't have enough time on the device. Those Pi 4s will allow me to simultaneously stream like five video streams and compress audio, and they work fine. Um, the my concern is if we're pegging those processors inside a plastic box um, that we we run out of cooling. And so that's that's the one that I, that's the piece where I have questions. Okay, I mean, just precise is running. What did we run like half you know CPU on it without even flinching? So yeah, I, yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of confidence that we've done optimization in any of that stuff. So unless Ken, do you feel as though precise is optimized for efficiency? I don't, I don't. I don't know how to answer that. I don't know that I have enough knowledge to answer that intelligently, yeah. so I, I won't. Uh, but following up on Chris's point, are we looking at any non-Docker oriented installers that we can roll it back and have you tried to do an installation through their stuff and then roll it back to the previous version and it worked? Yeah, all that and stuff's super, super straightforward, at least with Bellina and with Pandacore and the others. Like that's a, a key feature is Atomic updates, so they roll back easily. But the, I haven't looked at any of the other container standards out there. There's a list of like a dozen. And then the second question is, is this process where we say, here's our image, go make this work? Or are they saying, here's our product, go make it work to us? Today, they're saying, here's our product, go make it work. But that's because we haven't got into a discussion about money. My, my, if we were to select them, I would say, you know, we bring them in and say, hey, we want to build a really, really well, um, well designed process for pushing Mycroft out through your platform. You know, there are a lot of IoT makers out there that are going to want voice as a feature in their IoT products. So this is a benefit to you. We're willing to pay you know, a reasonable fee for help with this. Let's let's use their expertise to do all the packaging stuff so we can focus on software. If we do this ourselves, we're gonna dork it up. At least if I do it, we're gonna dork it up. Yeah, it's just my experience is that Docker, um, I've had some bad experiences with Docker. Now granted, I was pushing it and trying to do 
a lot of really difficult things and it wouldn't work. But uh, it works great. My, my, my overall perspective on Docker is it works great for simple run-of-the-mill stuff. But when you get into larger, more complicated systems that utilize more features, um, you become a Docker expert. And, uh, you know, that's my concern is it's, if, if they're doing it, here's our image, go make it happen, that's great. But if they're saying, here's a product, and oh, by the way, we require you to Dockerize your product to work in our environment and work around these, you know, issues regarding networking and all of that, um, we, we could be in for a bumpy ride. So my recommendation would be to throw them an image and say, make it work, and then see what they come back with. Yeah, I think that that's kind of their model is that they they do the heavy lifting. So we just need to make it uh, make it make sense for us financially uh, to make that happen and make it make sense for them financially as well. Um, but I think that there's a happy medium there. I mean, we can we can basically guarantee that we're going to ship 5,000 units almost right out of the gate. Um, and, you know, they amongst other things, their technical leads a backer. I mean, there are. They are kind of headed in our direction. No, no, I understand. It's just I've been through this with Docker and Ansible and Kubernetes and all of that nonsense, and it just always seems to be the same thing over and over again. Uh, you know, it's the 80-20 rule. You put up the 20% uh, of the time, and it's wonderful. You get your 80% there, and then uh, the next 80% of your time is required to get the last 20% if you can even get there. So, again, if we can, hey, here's the image. Go make it work. Prove it to us that it works. Show us it rolls back. That's great. Well, on the plus okay. side too, we can get Docker to, to work. I know we've talked about, you know, different things where we have Docker images running on cloud servers. You know, spinning them up real fast and spinning them down for, you know, for scalability and that kind of stuff. If we get that figured out, that's something, you know, that could benefit us in longer term. Yeah, yeah, then you're in a Docker swarm versus Kubernetes and all of that. Yeah, Gez, I I saw something about somebody porting Minecraft to an eighty two sixty six. Um, well, Tasmoda are interested in chatting. Um, yeah, and in that yeah. case, that's they're going to need to do something like that because the eighty two sixty six is like, you know, it, it, nothing, right? Like a Wi Fi stack on top of a very very small processor and with like two pieces of I/O. Um, and if they're going to make Minecraft work on that, they're going to need to do all of the heavy lifting on the back end with some kind of virtualization. I do like the idea of going through our build process too and seeing if there's any trap trip fat we can trim. Um, that's is one thing that is always very hard to me with um, distribution is you start putting things, you start adding things to your requirements, but you never really go back and say, oh, do I really still need this thing? You just keep adding. <laughs> And you know, it's been a challenge with every project I've worked on. Is you know, do, do, you know, how do you how do you know that you stopped or you forgot this code or don't need this you know this package anymore? Kind of stuff. It's it's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, we did a little bit of cleanup of the requirements in core recently um, because it was it was also because it was one giant requirements file. And so you're like, you know, when you change something, you're like, well, maybe something else uses this. I I don't know. Um, and so it's now split up a little bit into um, you know, a couple of different requirements files that indicate what it's actually a requirement of, so that, you know, that, that helps somewhat. Um, but I also think the us testing new versions of requirements is going to help a lot too, because there's probably a lot of optimizations that happen, you know, within those libraries. And if we, if we're using the later, the newer versions, then hopefully we're, we're getting those optimizations too. It's a compounding problem too, and I have this problem with uh, web development. If I install one web development library from npm, I went up installing 500 because each one of those depends on another one, which depends on another one, which then depends on three more. And yeah, and I'm sure the same problem is there with the Python packaging. Because, you know, you build a package, and a lot of sometimes it's just a you know a certain culmination of five or six other packages, and just, all of a sudden you're you got this huge piece of software. Um, because you wanted to use a handful of packages. Anyway, um, yeah, the the overall thing is not is not trivial. 
and it, we need to work through the workflow. That's the big piece. It's like, what, how are we going to go from A to B to Z and do these releases? Um, I would, I would like to set a goal. I actually had a question for you guys after your update. Um, you know, in my view, I would like to set a goal for by the time we're done on November 20th that we can, we can push, you know, a Mycroft package through whatever we select to the device and, you know, be, be squared away and ready, right? Because um, at, at that point, like we can start shipping, right? As, as long as we can connect it to the network reliably and push uh, atomic updates, um, we can start pushing, you know, the dev dev kits immediately, and you know, even 3D printed, you know, first run units to to critical partners um, right away. Um, but in my view, that's the blocker to shipping is having an update process that's repeatable and reliable and works and affordable. Is our goal to come out of the Hawaii trip to have dev kits available and ready to ship or to have a consumer oriented product available and ready to ship? Dev kits. We can't get we can't get the consumer product done. We might be able to get unit one of a computer consumer product done, but it'll be like hand sanded and finished 3D printed. So like we could do something that we could demo, but we won't have anything to put in a box and ship. Well, we're not going to get the software <laughs> consumer ready in two weeks either. <laughs> Let me manage I mean, the expectations there. <laughs> well, we've been working on it for five years. I mean, I think we can get pretty far. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, so before we actually uh, head out to the uh, to the retreat, we're we will uh, um, think the week prior to that we have a short sprint, and uh, we should take that time to uh, really solidify our goals for the for the summit. Um, Just to get a tan. Yeah, I've been uh, I've started a sprint actually, and I've, I've named it. So I've sprint I've created sprints that go all the way out to that time, just so that I can start to put tickets into the, uh, the retreat sprint. Um, and, uh, I've, I've started to create tickets for that and we can, you know, we can sort through those and decide which ones are, are the ones we want to tackle. Um, so maybe now's a good time to talk about the summit to the community since we've been alluding to it for 15 minutes now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. Josh, do you want to take a crack at that? Sure. We're doing a summit. Um, so we can only do so much via, video chat, um, you know, the bandwidth of communication is kind of limited. And uh, we're not really stuck, but we're not making the type of rapid progress that startups typically make. Um, you know, if you look at Lyft, uh, you know, the, the Lyft platform that they deployed that became Lyft, the company they built in three weeks. And so the, the you know, there's, we're pretty far along with all the core technologies we're, we're pretty ready to kind of start gluing everything together to create a product. So we decided to get everybody together in one place, um, you know, in a time zone that's accessible in a place that there's not a lot of disease. Um, and so we're, we're flying everybody out here to uh, the big Island with the exception of Gez who's stuck in Australia because of nationalism uh, and, and doing a big sprint surrounding a big sprint to see if we can get into, uh, you know, I get the product in a working shape. If, if, if I were to set the goal, I would say, you know, uh, you know, eight plus two done and working, maybe not perfect, but eight plus two, meaning the setup and the, you know, volume control plus the top eight skills people use, um, you know, with an update process, it's repeatable, uh, on the dev kits and, you know, from there, it, it, all the changes become incremental. So, um, we're starting that on November 9th here, and we're going to do a 12 day sprint, um, and see how much we can get done. Do we have whiteboards, Josh? <laughs> yes. Okay. I have a feeling they might come in handy. Yeah, I have an entire entire wall of the garage dedicated to whiteboards. I'm, I'm sure this is a silly question, but you've got plenty of USB keyboards and mice out there, right? Yes. And there's there's everything you guys need to work will be here on site including yeah, that's you know, my point. I don't want to pack usb keyboards and mice and nope. stuff like that we'll be able to we'll be able to mainline coffee and uh you know the weather's solid and and uh you know we'll we'll be able to get some recreational activities out like chris and the girls will 
I'm sure do pancakes and whatever in the mornings and keep us feet fed and just, we'll just, you know, eat and poop and code. Sounds like a party. <laughs> well, I can give you some advice because uh, my wife's not really happy about the trip. So I told her, dear, you know, I always wanted to visit Hawaii before I die. Don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will admit the ulterior motive is to, is to, um, uh, you know, make a make a case for locating the company here, um, and growing it here. Like the, you know, we're we're kind of the seeds of a company right now. Um, you know, I'd like to see us at fifty or a hundred staffers. You know, really building something that's competitive in the next next several years. Um, it's great to have a distributed team, but by the same token, it's it's great to have everybody in the same place. And if if folks are happy with this place, maybe this place is where we are. It's certainly affordable relative to Los Angeles or San Francisco or Seattle or New York or Boston. Um, and the weather's better than any of those places, including LA. So there's that. We haven't had any COVID for like three or four months. So just saying Darwin, Darwin is You're pretty great. You're referring, Chris. <laughs> Everything is poisonous. <laughs> Plus, you have multiple creatures that will eat you. Like, yeah. <laughs> Details. <laughs> we're still alive. You get your volcano, Josh. You're, I'm sorry you're, to break it to you, Josh, but we're not on the top of the food chain. <laughs> your, your prime minister went swimming in front of a group of reporters and didn't come back. <laughs> now, if you could replicate that for leaders here in the US. Now you'd have a you'd have a case. Uh, they need to be able to swim. <laughs> Hot air floats. Wow. Uh, uh, well, on that positive note, um, I'll, uh, I'll keep everyone apprised of the uh, situation when the hardware comes in uh, tomorrow. And uh, you'll, you'll be getting timely updates on that. And uh, we'll get those shipped off to uh, to Derek, and maybe we'll be sending some direct. Uh, depends on how things work out here. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about that, and uh, forward to giving everyone updates on that process over the next week. So, but for now, unless there's any other things people want to bring up, any last words? On the update technologies, I want to make sure that we consider the developer experience on those too. Um, yeah, but I'm sure we'll, we'll look at that and we we'll look yeah. at the different options. Right. Yeah. As I'm looking, as I'm looking at it, I'm beginning to understand why companies lock their platforms up. Like, I don't think it's necessarily ideological in every case. It's extremely practical to simply be able to enforce. This is the way it will be instead of being flexible. So we do need to figure out how to both provide reliable updates that are controlled and secure and also give the end user the ability to hack it and break it and do what they want to do with it. All right. Um, but uh, yeah, well, the, the goal is, I mean, the software will always be open, right? Uh, but for a consumer level device, um, you know, we need to make the, the common things easy and, you know, the uncommon things just need to be possible, right? So, um, all right. Well, uh, thanks everybody. I'll talk to you all uh, next week, if not before. Have a, Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a good weekend.